season, 2018 hurricane season. Similarly, other parts of the nation face their own natural disasters, not just hurricanes. Uh, they face their threat, the threats that, that can impact connectivity and slow emergency communications. Mr. Forte, uh, as MIDCO continues to expand to unserved markets, as well as upgrade existing systems, what precautions are being taken to help ensure that these systems are resilient to natural disasters, which for uh, your area would be tornado threats, of course? Uh, yeah, the, the, the first thing is obviously we build a lot of redundancy into our system. You know, multiple fiber rings of sizes large and small allow that technology to go back around the ring. So if we do have a, a fiber cut or an instance that instantly reroutes and hope, you know, is the first step in keeping you know, up for lost service. <laughs> Additionally, we have had you know, some disasters in North Dakota and tornadoes and flooding, and um, you know, we've responded uh, with, with providing free Wi-Fi and things for those communities on, a, on an instant basis. We have some trailers and things that we do. Uh, there are friends, there are customers. Uh, we do the best we can to make sure their communications are always working and uh, up and running as fast as possible. And if uh, for some reason the main lines aren't working, we provide alternate forms of technology to get them up and running right away. Thank you. Uh, continuing on uh, the topic of natural disasters, Mr. Stroop, uh, in your written testimony, you stated that satellite technology can deploy temporary fixed installations and very small aperture terminal. Uh, uh, antennas, ter terminal antennas, uh, in the aftermath of a disaster to help communities get reconnected. And the question is, how long does it take to deploy these systems to an impacted area? And what actions need to be taken by consumers in order to use these temporary systems if they do not have a pre-existing relationship with that satellite provider? The, the systems can be deployed in, in a matter of hours, depending upon where the, the uh, equipment is located. Um, I think what happened in Puerto Rico is a good example, uh, where carriers have come forward and noted that satellite needs to be considered an important part of the infrastructure for the rebuilding process because of the, the speed and capability of the, of the industry. For consumers, very often it is a matter of going to a point where there is existing, uh, where there is a, a satellite connection. And a good example is in Puerto Rico, where people lined up at a grocery store to be able to use satellite technology. Um, so it's something that very often is used in conjunction with cellular systems. Um, so they are providing the backhaul where the cellular system has gone down uh, with uh, uh, their with uh, other other technologies, point-to-point -point technologies. It's uh, not necessarily as applicable in, in terms of providing the point-to-point -point technology, but more being able to provide the backhaul capability. Okay, very good. I uh, appreciate it very much. And I'll yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. Mr. Kramer, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to all of you. My goodness, I